Hey guys, so we're going to be talking a little bit about plot holes today, specifically one involving Poe. So I want to give a spoiler warning. If you haven't seen The Last Jedi yet, go out and see it. I am going to be talking about plot details, and uh, there is your warning. So I'm going to start off with the first one that uh, a lot of people have criticized is that opening scene with Poe approaching the First Order Dreadnought. Uh, a lot of people have said, you know, well, why didn't they launch fighters? Why was Poe able to take out this this ship? And, you know, it, it, it was a big plot hole. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, and for me, it made perfect sense. So I kind of wanted to give a breakdown of it, at least from maybe a different perspective. Maybe some people are missing things or maybe you still don't like it. But I wanted to give it my best shot. So first off, you have to understand that Poe has shown up at the edge of communications range. Uh, he's outside of weapons range. He appears to be no threat when the movie starts off. When he shows up, he's so far away, he's not considered a threat. So the First Order doesn't launch anything to fight him. Uh, they don't even shoot him. He's, he's very, very far away. He's outside of re weapons range. And he's stalling during this whole time. And of course, you may or may not like the jokes that go on there. I feel like they've already established Poe as a joker uh, in the first movie. So I was okay with that. But I understand that it didn't feel like a Star Wars style joke. But that's taking away from the point. Let's get back to the point. And the point is that um, people thought that they should have launched fighters to intercept Poe right away. Well first off, he was out of range. Now, the, obviously, the whole time he's powering up this new booster that's going to, you know, push him very, very far, very, very quick. Uh, this is new tech. This is stuff the First Order doesn't have. They, he's, it's not expected that a T-70X wing is going to be able to close the distance in about one or two seconds. So, the First Order, in their ignorance, thinks that he is no threat. It's a lone starfighter. And they even talk about, it's a single starfighter? What can they do as they're approaching us from so far away? But that was part of the plan. Uh, they're overconfident, and also they're somewhat inexperienced. Now, they did show uh, that Captain Kennedy mentioned, you know, we should have launched the fighters five minutes ago. So here's an older captain. Hux is still young. Uh, the older captain with a little bit more experience is like, yeah, we should have. He, he knew, you know, better off. But this was kind of Hux's failure. And it's something we see of Hux is that while well, he's, you know, in a position of power, he's just not the most experienced officer. Thrawn, on the other hand, would have done three different things to counter Poe. He would have expected a surprise or a trap. He would have launched fighters right away, but probably wouldn't have launched all of them. He would have had like two or even three waves of fighters prepped for maybe a cloaked force or whatever. Thrawn would have planned for every contingency, and I think some of the audience has come to expect Thrawn's level of competence amongst all officers, whether they're Empire or First Order, and they view it as a plot hole when somebody is just foolish, but I think that's what makes Thrawn so great, is that he doesn't represent that foolishness, whereas Hux does have that foolishness. So, uh, moving forward, um, you know, Pope finally stalls long enough to power up his booster. He closes the gap before they could even launch fighters because there was no threat. The First Order isn't going to launch fighters if there is no threat. Of course, that's their own fault for not seeing a threat, but I don't view that as a plot hole. I view that as, uh, you know, explained by their, you know, incompetence or specifically Hux's incompetence in this case. Uh, and that's one another reason why Snoke was mad at him. You know, you failed. Your failure completely disappoints me. Um, so, you know, Poe is able to get in there. Now, another complaint about this is that why was Poe able to do so much damage to all those cannons on the top? You have to understand this is Poe. This isn't, you know, a rookie pilot. This is the number one pilot in the resistance. And Poe's also got a, a souped up X-Wing. So that's, you know, that that is accounting for that. I don't consider that a plot hole either. If he had fighters launched earlier, he would not have been able to do the damage that he did. But... Of course, as we all know, he was able to because he's Poe. So that is my explanation for this particular plot hole. Let me know what you think. Um, do you still consider it a plot hole or do you think that it's explainable? Let me know in the comments below. And even if you still do view this as a plot hole, uh, what are your thoughts on... Well, doesn't every movie have a plot hole? Hasn't, you know, let me look, go back to the very first Star Wars movie. You know, you got you basically have a little hole in the Death Star that blows the whole thing up. Isn't that literally and, and figuratively a plot hole? A literal hole, you know? Um, I mean, they've had to write countless books, video games, and even a, an entire major motion picture to explain that. So, I mean, you give this movie 30 years of time, 
uh, or 40 years of time to go ahead and cover up the, uh, you know, why Poe didn't get shot down and nobody would view it as a plot hole either. But that's just my take on it. I want to hear what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to probably cover more of these. Let me know which plot holes or contrivances or inconsistencies you want me to talk about next and I'll do my best. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.